Do you want to learn about additional commands you probably aren't familiar with? Want to add functionality to your Raspberry Pi with just a few keystrokes? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we'll talk about seven commands you need to know for your Raspberry Pi. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links available in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Now, here's what we're going to be talking about in this video, and that's the seven Raspberry commands you need to know. First, we're going to talk about the internal commands, and then we'll talk about some commands you can add on or install to the Raspberry Pi. Now, the Raspberry Pi, because of its Linux foundation, has quite a bit of versatility and functionality to it. So there's going to be some commands that you may not be aware about, and some commands that are not intuitive in terms of the way you and I would think about getting to the information at hand. So the first one we're going to go with is one called uptime. And this is handy because if you want to know how long the Raspberry Pi has been up and running, this is the easiest way, short of catching something at reboot, to tell you what's going on. So if there's a problem to where there has been what's called a kernel panic to where it may reboot on its own. If you see a very short uptime, this is a good indication that you may have a problem and you can dig into the logs. And we'll show you that one too. Now, the next one to look at, you, know, you want to make sure, especially when you're looking at logs and trying to correlate between this Raspberry Pi and other things on your network, such as NTP, whatever you can think of, you want to make sure that the Raspberry Pi's got a good clock to it. You would think you just go clock. So what we have to do is we have to go date. And that tells us not only the date, but it gives us the clock that it currently knows about. So if NTP is not functional or you've got a lot of drift on or some reason, either it's something in the Raspberry Pi or the NTP server you're referencing is having a problem, this is a good indication that you may want to go look at something. For those with a Cisco or network component background, this next command is one you may already know about, but not may not realize that it's on the Raspberry Pi. If you want to see a list of the commands you've entered at the prompt, it's just a matter of doing history, if you can spell it right. So this goes back and shows you, you notice the number on the left-hand side of the page, and that is how many entries it's got in the buffer. And this is something that does survive a reboot. So if you're not sure what you did before, you rebooted, there's a good chance this is probably still available to you. Now, if it gets to a point that there's more than you want to have to scroll back and look at, I'll show you that in a minute. But I just realized if you we're already down to the bottom of the file. So if we go history and then we do the pipe command, which it looks like a split bar on some keyboards, and then more, see, then we can page through and look for the entire duration of the buffer. And then you can just press Q to quit. Now, if you decide you don't need this anymore, then you just do history dash C. And the next time you do do the history command, all it's going to show you is the command you just entered because you've completely purged the buffer. So when you're troubleshooting things or you've, you entered a command that you're not quite sure that you had it written down right when you keyed it in, this is a way to see what you've done and hopefully be able to figure out where the problem is. I'm as guilty as the next person with when I need to shut the Raspberry Pi down, I just simply pull the power to it. I'll be the first to admit that, but that's not the better way to do it. And the reason I'm saying better is that if you're doing some sort of database application on or something where files are being left open, they don't get a chance to be properly closed. So you could lose potentially valuable diagnostic information. What we want to do, and there's any number of ways you can do this. When I want to really make sure I've got a clean shutdown, I do sudo shutdown dash H now. See, now we've lost connection to the Raspberry Pi. And when you go down to seeing just the single power light on there, no activity, probably give it about three to five seconds after that, then you know for sure that the Raspberry Pi is cleanly shut down so you can go about pulling the SD card or making whatever changes that you need to. When you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device, please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen. This will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created. The form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app. And if you're not already using a password manager app, please get one now and get started. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information 
to anyone. Well, we've covered the internal commands that I wanted to get in front of you. Now we're going to go to some of the add-on commands. I have had situations where I suspected that the SD card or micro SD card, depending on the flavor of Raspberry Pi I was using, might have been having some problems. But there's no good way on the Raspberry Pi when you're in CLI to run any sort of testing. So what we'll do is we'll just add the hdparm command. And this is going to give us a little bit of information. It's not going to be totally, you know, the solution, but at least it gives you a little bit more to work with. The SD card that the Raspberry Pi is running on is going to be named a little bit differently. So what we'll do is we'll call, because hdparm is doing some things that you need root privileges for, we'll start with sudo hdparm dash t, and then we'll go into the block. Okay, so it did do a read. Now you can see there's a whole host of commands. So having the HDPARM available to you is going to be one that lets you really dig into the hood. But I will caution you with this one. There are some of these commands where you can start changing how the SD card works, changing some parameters that you might end up with either a scrambled SD card, possibly a Raspberry Pi that won't boot. Don't know for sure it's going to happen, but this is one that gets under the hood enough. You need to be a little bit on the cautious side. Now, this has been one of the favorite commands I learned about a few months ago, and I use it a lot, especially on machines that I don't have automatically starting a task or an application or a service, and yet I want to be able to detach from it and then come back to it later and see what's going on. And that's called the screen command. So if you try to do screen with a default Raspberry Pi, it's going to say, command not found. So here's what you need to go do. We'll actually install the screen command. It takes it just a few seconds. It's not that big of a deal to do. Then what you can do is do a screen bash and we'll just run the top command. So we'll just, we'll let that one set for right now. Then we will disconnect from the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now we're going to log back into the Raspberry Pi. Hold it, nothing's running. And it's there. It's just kind of hidden from you. So if you do a screen dash R and it's going to go for the last screen that was there, then you can see top is still up and running and it shows you everything else that's going on. So this is a handy command. If you want to leave something running, whether it's a diagnostic command like top or something else, that way when you detach from the Raspberry Pi, the process doesn't stop. Now you've seen an assortment of commands. Some are internals, and by internals, I mean ones that were installed as a part of the base Raspberry Pi OS installation, and others that were add-ons, like the screen command, like the HD Parm command. So there's all sorts of flexibility in the Raspberry Pi, and you can get it to do just about anything you want to. If it's a regular Linux command, chances are you can probably add it to the Raspberry Pi, or it may already have it. Enjoy and explore. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.